Hi guys, welcome to Will the Beard Reviews. Today we're talking about Uncanny X-Men Issue 8, Disassembled Part 8. Now this is written by Matthew Rosenberg, Kelly Thompson, and Ed Brisson with art by R.B. Silva. Now, last issue we saw that X-Men and the four younger X-Men, Glob, Rockslide, Pixie, and Armor were sucked into the Age of Apocalypse timeline, that alternate timeline from way back in the 90s, pushed there by Legion at the end of issue six. Over the course of the time that they were there, two of the younger X-Men wanted to kill X-Man, and the other two wanted to save him. The two that wanted to kill him saw him as a th still a threat to their home and wanted to basically cut their losses, kill him there, take care of it. The other two wanted to use him to get back home and then try to convince him to stop whatever he was doing. Now, I thought that issue was a little disorienting a little jarring within the story because it didn't tell let the audience know that it had been a couple of years and there was just kind of trying to get into the the story this issue however the first page of it picks up right where that one left off but the rest of it is the other x-men still fighting the other three uh for other three horsemen of salvation uh, blob magneto and omega red and what's really cool about this one is I think it retroactively makes issue seven better. Um, so while they're fighting it, again, for the first half of this issue, I thought it was fairly disorienting. Within the story, I didn't know how much time had passed. I thought as much time had passed in that timeline as had passed in the Age of Apocalypse timeline. Come to find out that was not the case. Right after Legion pushed those five characters into the Age of Apocalypse timeline, this is all still going on. We find out that those five characters are not actually in that timeline. They are in a mental space within Legion. He pulled them into his head, and they have lived almost a year in the span of five years minutes and it's just it's a heartbreaking moment when we find that out because Hisako armor is getting into it with Bishop and she's like do you guys finally you know decide to come and get us I you know in this time that we've been here going through hell we've you know put figured out that you know we thought we were heroes but we're x-men that just means that were soldiers and soldiers fall and she lifts off some lists off some other x-men that have fallen and you can tell that it's it's hurt her she is a damaged person having to come to the realization that they you know, let them let this happen to them and didn't come after them because to her and to them it's been a year but bishop says it's been five minutes and you just see that wash over her. and I got to give credit to uh, R.B. Silva for drawing that the way that he did to get pull that emotion off of the page and so uh, Psylocke is using her uh, psychic blade to push Bishop into Legion's mind and that's when X-Man starts to put everything together he's like we're not in a different timeline we're in Legion's head so he starts to do his X-Man thing and Legion's like ha you're in my playground now and you know has some psychic uh, manifestations of other heroes and he's like you have no idea what you're dealing with and then X-Man is like you know what Legion you have no idea what you're dealing with and takes over Legion. So now at the end of this comic, we have X-Man possessing Legion's body, presumably having the power sets, the combined power sets of both of those characters. So, wow. I Like I said, I thought issue seven kind of went off the rails a little bit and kind of detracted from the overall story. But with issue eight, I think issue eight, the story that they tell, the way they circle back around to what they did in issue seven, brings that story home, makes it more powerful, more impactful. So it's, it's kind of an odd thing. With comics, each issue is its own, should be its own individual piece, and in some ways should stand on its own, and should be judged on its own merits as part of the whole story. But everything is so much better when you take it as that whole, as that whole storyline, almost like a single episode out of a whole season of a TV show. So guys, I loved issue eight. I thought it was rocky at first, but once that story came full circle, I think issue seven and eight really need to be read back to back, read right together. Just another reason I'm very happy 
that this, that this uh, story in this series is being published weekly right now. So every Wednesday you got another piece of that story. Honestly, I'm going to miss it a little bit when uh, Uncanny X-Men goes to bi-weekly, I believe. I don't think it's going to monthly. I think it's going to bi-weekly or every other week. So I thought this was a great issue. It had a lot of good, good emotion, a lot of good impact. Sets the stage for two, uh, for the final two issues, issues 9 and 10. That should be explosive. It should be amazing. And I can't wait. Again, super happy that it is weekly just gotta wait another week to get uh, issue 9 and two weeks to get issue 10 to see where this whole crazy story takes us so guys what did you think about this issue 8 did you uh, feel the same way I felt about issue 7 and then the same way I felt about 8 did you like 7 more than I did let me know all of that in the comments below Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here at the channel, hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.